Son of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of Saint Benedict, the father of Western monasticism, a true spiritual guide for so many souls even to this day. Our diocese boasts, I think, of five different Benedictine monasteries, and so I guess it's a big day around here considering there's so many Benedictine monasteries who follow the rule of Saint Benedict. Let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot St. Benedict an outstanding master in the school of divine service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before love of you, we may hasten with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. Each of them had six wings. With two they veiled their faces. With two they veiled their feet and with two they hovered aloft. They cried out to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is filled with his glory. The sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed. For I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed your sin purged. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. 
Your throne stands from of old. From everlasting, you are Lord. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for the length of days. For the name of Christ, blessed are you. The Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, no disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple to become like his teacher, for the slave to become like his master. If they call the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops, and do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we celebrate St. Benedict. In the sixth century, he was a young man, he was a teacher, and he had about had it with the world. Everything around him just seemed so crazy. Sound familiar? He just had enough of it. And he realized his teaching wasn't sufficient to change the world. He had to do something more. And so he decided the answer to save his own soul and to help other souls was to become a hermit. And as his life went on, he went from being a hermit, hello folks, we're back. From being a hermit to being a, uh, a monk, and then eventually he took over a monastery, wrote a rule of life for the monks, and his motto was ora et labora, pray and work. But it's interesting because in these past few days I've been focusing on the need to pray and the need to do penance, right? To live a life of prayerful works because this world has gone so crazy that the only answer to it is prayer and penance. And we must be praying for the conversion of this world. We must be doing penance for the conversion of this world. There is no other answer than prayer and penance. However, unlike St. Benedict, we can't run away to a monastery. At least not all of us. Some of you probably could. There's plenty around the diocese. 
We have to live in this world. And we have a world that is radically turning away from Christ. We're told that religion has no place in politics. And that is not true. Our country was founded on the principle that the, that the government shall make no law concerning religion. It never said that religion could not influence the culture or the country. Never said that. When our founding fathers were writing the constitutions, Ben Franklin sat there with his Bible right next to him. It was founded by men of faith. And even in the Declaration of the Independence, they directly reference God. I shouldn't say reference him, they speak directly about him. Inscribed in our very founding documents, so this whole thing about, oh, your religion shouldn't influence your politics. Baloney. Baloney. To somehow separate who I am before God and my conscience and my relationship with God from how we live in society is a dualistic approach that is weird, to say the least. I know we're not supposed to talk about bad about JFK, but I will say this about him. When he said that line that he would not allow his Catholic faith to influence his politics, that was wrong. If his faith was truly formed, his person was truly formed by his faith and in his conscience, he should have let his Catholic faith, the fullness of truth, influence the decisions he makes for the rest of the world. We cannot separate our faith and who we are before God and particularly moral decisions that have to be made on for the sake of society. For example, there are Catholic politicians who dare to say, well, I'm personally opposed to abortion, but there's no but. You know who tried that line and didn't go well for him? The first pro-choice politician, Pontius Pilate. He was personally opposed to killing Jesus, but the people wanted it. He tried the political line. It doesn't work. Our consciences must be formed by our faith. And it is faith and in our conscience that we need to make an influence and an impact on this culture and this society. The problem has been that so many of us have divorced our faith from our place in society. Not too long ago, the previous administration told us that Freedom of religion meant you had the freedom to go worship. But it was not to be brought into the public square. And that's not what our Lord Jesus Christ says today. He says, and let me quote him, what I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. Speak it. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Our Lord Jesus Christ never says, go get together, gather together, huddle together, and uh, that's where you worship, that's how you practice your faith. Mm -mm. Our Lord expects us to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. He expects that we will take this faith that we have, which has formed our conscience, and to bring it into the public square, into the streets, proclaim from the housetops. That we should not be afraid to speak our faith and to speak it boldly and allow our faith to influence every aspect of our lives. Because it's who we are before God. Our primary relationship is our relationship with God, i.e. our faith. And I know we don't feel always worthy or capable of it, which is why we need to ask the Holy Spirit for the grace. At baptism, we were given the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they were strengthened, increased at confirmation. And so we've been given the grace of wisdom and knowledge and counsel and understanding and fortitude to proclaim our faith in a way the society can receive it. But we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us in this. 
Look at Isaiah today, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. He has this vision of this angel, right? The house is shaking. There's this seraphim standing there before him. And his response is, woe is me. <laughs> I'm doomed. <laughs> I'm an unclean person living among other unclean people. I'm dead. <laughs> he stands before God in this incredible moment. The angel is there and he's like, oh no, this is not good. <laughs> He's afraid. And so the angel takes the ember from the altar of incense that burns before God. He touches the lips of Isaiah, cleanses them, so that his mouth would be free to speak. And so when the Lord asks, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah peeks up and says, here I am, send me. When we were baptized, the priest, after we were baptized, took his thumb and blessed your ears, asking the Lord to open your ears so that you might hear the word of God. And then he blessed our lips, asking the Lord to open our lips that we might proclaim the gospel. Our lips were touched with that amber when our lips were blessed at baptism to speak boldly and freely the saving message of the gospel. Yes, in this crazy world, we need to pray and pray hard. In this crazy world, we need to do penance. And in this crazy world, we need to speak and speak boldly without fear. If they treat us ill, our Lord says, don't worry, they treated me that way first. He even says, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. He says, then you'll be like the master. You'll be like the teacher. So don't be afraid. He tells us, don't be afraid of what they can do to our bodies. Don't be afraid of death, the Lord says. Be afraid of God who could throw you into hell. That's the one to be afraid of. <laughs> don't be afraid of man. We have nothing to fear of this world. That's why the early Christians were so free because they knew, they understood that death was not the end. They knew that a moment of death, the kingdom of heaven would be open to them if they died for Christ. They weren't afraid. Our Lord says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. He tells us what we're worth, the value of a person. Even every, every hair on our head is counted. That's more consolation for some than others. How beautiful our Lord speaks about our worth and not to fear. Prayer, penance, proclamation. The three P's of the week. <laughs> Prayer, penance, proclamation. To proclaim the gospel and how we live and the way we speak, the manner in which we speak and that we do speak. Prudently, prudently, in a way that it can be received, so that this culture can once again receive the light, come out of the darkness, be free from its imprisonment, and come to know the joy of the love of God. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly, Lord, upon these offerings, which we make in honor of St. Benedict, and grant that by following his example in seeking you, we may merit the gifts of unity in your service and of peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of his providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Whose honor in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whose honor in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. The font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this altar and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, and Take this hand and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
This is the steward faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household, to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a young man was coming up for communion, I saw his shirt said, Life is good. It is. And it gets better the closer you get to God. So uh, life is good, and it gets even greater when we immerse ourselves in the goodness and the mercy of God. So keep up the positive attitude and keep your eyes fixed on God. will make your life not just good, but awesome. Or as they say in Rhode Island, wickedly awesome. They love wicked. I don't know why they like that word. But, uh, have a beautiful, blessed day, everybody, and enjoy the weekend. We'll see you at Mass for the uh, Sunday Mass. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.